Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler video. It's almost ice off. Well, it's actually iced off in a few lakes already in the British Columbia area. And I wanted to take a look at my fly box, the mothership, to see if it was ready for this season. I've been tying a bunch and a whole bunch of really cool flies came into the store that I'm too lazy to tie and I spent a mild fortune on them. Uh, but I wanted to share with you some of these new and contemporary patterns that I would recommend putting in your box if you're heading out for ice off conditions or post turnover conditions uh, when it comes to getting out in early lake season in the interior of British Columbia. Now as a bonus we're also going to take a look at what's in here. This is my quick and easy lake fishing kit. All the bare essentials that I need I just throw this into a pack. It's got all my tippets, leaders, indicators, split shot, all that fun jazz and some interesting ones that I've added over the years that make my life easier when I'm out on the water. If you wanna see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in with me. I'm filming for Easter long weekend, and historically, Easter is a cool time to hang out with a family, look for some eggs in the garden, but then to go lake fishing. Why? Well, we're getting ice off, and this season's actually been a little bit late, but we are hearing reports that things are starting to move in the right direction, and you're gonna want to be planning your early trips now, and then your late trips, when I say late, just post turnover, those should be being calculated now. The general rule is eight to 15 days after ice off, a lake will turn over and it will get really murky. It will get really cloudy with all this stuff at the bottom of the lake turning up to the top, but I'm not gonna go into the biology behind why that happens. But the long story short is some of the absolute best fishing of the season is early when the fish are very close to shore looking for high oxygenated water. Then it goes dead for maybe eight to 15 days, but then on usually on week three, week four, and then week five, of a lake coming to ice off, we get, I call the honeymoon stage of a lake for the season. And that is when things start getting stable, when we start seeing chronomid hatches, when we start seeing other bug life come into play and definitely worth trying to time that post turnover stage. Now, if you're heading out for ice off, we've got some quick tips on how to get the information that you need in the Friday Fishing Report. Click up here, the latest video that we did just dated back to the Easter long weekend. And there's some cool things in there that you can use to gauge if your lake is iced off. But today it's all about what to do when you get out there. So we had a bunch of cool patterns hit the shop this week. And uh, Justin Sander, uh, Fly Tying Force, brought us a bunch of interesting custom patterns that we talked to him about and sort of tweaked to the way we want it. Now, I've also got some really neat materials in the shop right now. We've got Upavon, we've got Fritz, we've got booby cutting devices. I'll put them up there because it's well worth getting into cutting them. And I'm gonna show a couple patterns with the eyes rounded on the boobies, which I do recommend if you can get into tying. But let's take a look at what Justin's brought to us. And uh, I wanted to share some of the patterns with you. First one that I would throw in a box when it comes to ice off fishing is going to be a balanced vampire leech. Yes, you've heard about this one before, but in a balanced head turner style, you can fish this on a floating line, even without an indicator casting very close to shore and twitching in, or you can stick it under an indicator and suspend it in some of that shallow water that might snag if you were running a clear intermediate line, a sink tip, or even just a floating line with a weight and a nine foot leader. So that one is probably my first bet when I get out to a lake and I'm working the edge looking for something. It also trolls really good. So if you're doing a little bit of scouting, ripping along the drop off, looking for fish, dragging this behind the boat isn't a bad bet. And then you'll be right ready to cast if you see something that is enticing in the shallow water. Now, the second thing you want to have in your box when it comes to ice off is balanced leeches. Uh, vampire leech is obviously very much a balanced leech, but a standard issue, black or maroon, let me dump out the box here of little goodies that Justin got us. But this guy is a bruiser leech with an egg sucking head. I'll throw that up there. And this one has been really good. Again, under an indicator or 
cast and retrieve with a clear intermediate, a sink tip, or your floating line, uh, again, knowing that the fish are very shallow. What else do I have in the kit? Well, I've got brown leeches, same idea. I've got green leeches, same idea. This is where I'm gonna start. The second thing I'm gonna look at is going to be blobs. And love them or hate them, these are an extremely good attractor style pattern. We've got a wicked selection in the shop right now. And uh, you wanna come down. I do like the sort of oranges and pinks, the chartreuses and uh, corals, uh, but we've got a great selection. Play with it on your given lake. Uh, these look like a blob of Daphnia uh, or just a general attractor style pattern. If I'm not seeing anything going on, almost always I'm gonna throw a balanced leech out on an indicator and a blob out on an indicator and see what happens. See if I can get a stomach pump, see if I can get an idea of what the fish are doing and maybe get a little more dialed in. But some days I don't need to change. It's either the leech or the blob is going to cover it for me. Now, on the bright and attractory front, boobies are going to be in your kit early season. This one's awesome, classic tequila booby, but like I said, we've got the cutters now in the shop, and I'm gonna throw this one up the JT died, where he rounded the edges and he glued the eyes. I don't know if this makes a difference, but when I see them moving through the water, a rounded eye using a lighter or just shaving off the edges seems to make the booby wobble a little bit more, and if you wanna get into tying your own, it's kind of a fun process to play around with, and we've got all the materials at the shop for that, so come on down. Now, the last one that you're gonna want in your kit for a early season is going to be a scud. And Justin tied these awesome. It's got this wicked little hot spot. It's a straggle style shrimp pattern. And again, you can fish these in a bunch of ways. You can stick them under an indicator. You can cast and strip them with a floating line, or you can put them on a tip or intermediate line in those shallows and retrieve them. I tend to, when I'm retrieving them, use a very small shotgun retrieve, pop, 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 pop and stop pop up, pop up, and stop. When it comes down to the indicator, you can just let them hang out there or you can slowly twitch them along. Uh, but the fish are gonna be foraging heavily right now and one of the only major food sources available to them is going to be aquatic shrimp or scuds. Uh, so make sure you have those in your kit. One tip is look at the color of the lake you like to fish. Whether it is a light color or a dark green color, the shrimp tend to take on the color of the given lake that they're in. So if it's that pale sort of moral color, you're going to see more pale shrimp and vice versa. If it's a deep green colored lake, you're going to see deeper green olive style scuds. Okay, now let's talk about uh, what's in my essential lake kit. I take this everywhere with me. I've got a bag that I love. I've had it forever. I think if you want to see my bag video, you see me talk about that. I haven't upgraded it yet, though there are some cool bags out there. Get a bag that has all your lake stuff so you can just throw it in the boat, throw it in the truck when you head out. And what should you have in it? I really like these flambeau cases. This is a 00330 if you want to know the code. It works out really nicely. And what's in it? Well, First off, I got uh, my tippets, and I'm going to be carrying 5X fluorocarbon right here. I'm going to be carrying 4.5 fluorocarbon, and I'm going to be carrying 4. Last but not least, I'm going to throw a 3 or a 2 in the game just for something heavy. It's all going to live in this kit. Yes, I'm going to have other tippets in the boat, but these are quick at hand. When I sort of get into the boat, get everything set up, this is sitting there. I can get really quickly to these if I need to fix something or I need to build something. Now, there's nothing worse than trying to build a chronomid leader when you're out in a boat and bouncing around and you're freezing cold because it's early season. So don't be that guy. Build the leaders beforehand. Have them built. And what I do is I take your classic gear fisherman's leaderboards. You can see right here, and I have them all pre-done. Now I've cut this leaderboard in half to fit the case that I am using because it works quite nicely, but I mark them out. I've got one, two, three different boards and they're going to have a variety of different stuff on them. And you can see right here, I write down what I've got. So this is a 12 foot leader. And just for a note, I really like the Scientific Angler or the Rio dedicated indicator leaders. I'm not gonna build my butt section. Why? I don't want knots in that first 10 to 12 feet that are gonna catch up my indicator when it comes to this game. So I've gone to fully tapered leaders there. They taper really quickly, meaning it's really thick to turn over your indicator and then they get down really, really quick. I'm gonna put them up here, but they're highly recommended. We used to play around with building butt sections, but I'm out of that game just because those knots are such a pain in the butt to deal with. 
However, on that I'm going to tie a middle section and then a tippet section. And sometimes when I'm going along, I will tie multiples. I'm not gonna get into how we build leaders here, but this one, for example, is 12 feet plus six feet plus three feet. So it's 12 feet of your tapered leader in 3X, it's six feet in 4X, and then it is three feet in 5X. Now, a couple things about these, well, I obviously have my indicators on there and I have a bunch of indicators rolling around in here. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But between that last junction, I'm going to put a swivel or a tippet ring. Just makes my life easy. I don't think the swivel gets you the weight you need. You are going to add split shot to it. And if you've got really picky fish, you might actually consider cutting off the swivel because I have had fish eat this instead of my given cron image. And the other thing you're gonna see on here is I am going to put a bobber stop. That's another take from the gear fisherman. I'm gonna throw that on and you actually do have to use the heavy ones. It's a little counterintuitive. There's small pound test and there's heavy pound test, but remember you're throwing it onto the butt section of your leader. And what's that for? Well, we are going to peg these indicators. And if you don't know how to peg these, come down to the shop. It's pretty straightforward. We're gonna set them up to slip because we might have a long leader. And I'm gonna put the bobber stop just above it where it's set. And that's gonna give me a marker. So if I get into fish, I'm starting to set hooks and get back to the sweet spot where I'm getting bites. I'm gonna use this little bobber stop to mark where that is. I used it all last season. I really liked it. Uh, it got me back in the game. I do know some more advanced anglers that don't even bother to slip float their indicator. They just tough it out and hand line up from the bottom of the boat because they don't want to lose that mark. But at least for me, it may not be as precise. I really like this system. Come down to the shop. We'll show you how to do it. Last one is all these leaders are looped a little bit large. Yes, I know some guys that are really into it will make sure their lines are spliced right in and don't get into loops. But why is the loop really large? Well, I want to be able to loop on this whole leader over whatever I've got going. I've got to pass the indicator through the whole shooting match. It's not as elegant as a perfectly built leader. And I might start the day with one that I've built for the rod specifically, but when things go sideways, when the train wrecks, which we all know it does with indicator fishing, uh, having that big loop allows me to pass the indicator through it and get it onto my fly line without having to cut anything off. Okay, split shot. Uh, and little bits and bobs. I've got my kit here, which I absolutely love. We sell these at the shop, super convenient. Got a couple extra pegs because they sometimes get lost. I've got tippet rings and I've got two to three sizes of split shot. I like number fours and BBs. BBs are the big ones, number fours are the small ones. Some guys go harder than that and they might even spread some sizes out and have multiple split shot throughout their line. My brother-in-law loves two on his set between each of the major junctions, right? It is not. I'm still a one split shot kind of guy, but I might change that. We'll see what happens in the future there, but I've got multiple sizes because I want enough weight to get me straight down, but I don't want too much that it's hard to cast and hits the water like a ton of bricks. So there is my essentials box. Now, what else have I got in here? Well, I have these guys, which I really like. We sell them at the shop. Uh, this is an ice fishing tool, but it's designed to cramp onto your fly. You can see there, and I'm going to use this to plumb my depth. And so I'm going to just cramp that on. You guys can use forceps. They work great as well. But these are like $2.50 versus my forceps, which are between $9 and $50, depending on what I have in the kit. Uh, I just throw these on. You're going to drop it down. You're going to find your depth. And then you're going to bring it up 6 to 8 inches for your starting point to put your indicator. You're going to measure it with the water. Then you're going to move that barber stop. And you know you're going to be dialed in. And you can work your depth really effectively. Okay, what else do I have? Well, when we go to my fly box, so you guys have seen the mothership, and uh, here it is. Uh, and yeah, it's way too excessive. I've had many people tell me you're an idiot for having this many flies, but I keep having instances where a fly that I've had in here for five or six years and I've never used, I thought I should just turf, became really, really critical in a lake fishing moment when the fishing gods said that that's what the fish were eating. So anyway, but on the other side here, it has a whole other side. And I was optimistic when I got this. I thought I'd fill the whole thing. But realistically, I have found that putting a couple interesting things on the far side of it is way more useful. Gosh, I'm making a mess here, but you get the idea. So on the other side, I throw my random stuff. My random stuff, well, I've got fly line cleaner. 
because obviously picking up your line off the water when you've forgotten to clean it is a pain in the butt, especially when you're indicator fishing with long leaders. So I have that quick to go. I also have floatant and it's not for dry fly fishing. I very rarely dry fly fish in the early season, but again, I'll throw that on my line so it picks up off the water when I'm setting the hook uh, on an indicator rig or heck any rig. It just makes the casting much easier. I got some backup split shot um, right here. I've got a nail knot tool because when stuff really hits the fan and you might need to fix a fly line, there it is. We have our stomach pump. You guys know I swear by these. There's actually some junk still stuck in that from last season, uh, but very, very useful. You don't know how to use one of these. Come down to the shop. We'll walk you through it. It's not actually jamming into the stomach of a fish. It's just catching the stuff on the last meal coming out uh, so you don't harm the fish at all. You can see what they ate and you can release them successfully. Now, the other thing I've got, I've got a real clear fly puck. Now, a vial works really good for this as well. We sell them in the store, but you want something clear to put the stuff into when you've been using the stomach pump because throwing it in your hand or throwing it on the bottom of the boat works but isn't ideal. I've got a backup pair of forceps. Again, these are going to be my depth finders. I'll throw them down, but they're nice at hand. Uh, I've got some Stanley's Ice Off Paste. This stuff is useful for folks going out early season when your guides start freezing up in the morning. You're going to put this on the guys to keep them ice free and it's darn nice in that situation. And last but not least, I do have some dry fly shake. That is if I get into a dry fly situation, but I doubt that's going to happen in the early season. Okay, that's everything I've got. Oh, last but not least, this guy. This guy is awesome. So, I've got a boat that I run out of, but it's very common that I'm jumping into friends' boats or I'm going up to cool lodges that have boats set up for me. And it's very rare that I see any boat that I walk into set up the way I want it when it comes to rod holders. This is the Scotty R8 rod holder. It's R5 or R8. I'll put it up here. Uh, super cool, super quick release. Let me see if I've got a rod handy. Now, let's grab this one. And so how this works, you can see it right there. We're going to put the rod in like that. It jams down and then it's stuck in place. It ain't going anywhere. But if the bobber goes down and I see it, all I've got to do is lift up and I can set the hook. Now, the trick here, however, is not actually the rod holder. It's the piece on the bottom. And this guy is the Scotty, I want to say it's the gunnel mount or canoe gunnel mount. This allows me to clamp onto just about anything. And the last tip is it does come with an extender so you can pivot it. Sometimes I like having the extender on because I can angle the rods where I want them. But if you want it to be a little bit lower profile, you can pull that extender out and connect it just like this, but get the slip discs. I don't know if you can see it in there, that chartreuse and blue thing in the middle, uh, but it's always a pain in the butt with Scotty because they have these sort of teeth wheels. I don't know if you can see that there, uh, but that only allows you to get maybe 15 degrees of variation of where you're going to move your rod. With these slip discs, I can loosen it up and I can put it exactly where I want it when it comes to the angle of the rod. And you might say, well, it's going to be the same every time. It's not. When it comes to the wind and how the boat is being pushed, having the right angle on your rods plays a big role in getting a good presentation. Sometimes I want a swinging presentation with my indicator so the wind is swinging it across as it's sitting there in the holder. Other times I want it dead straight without movement so it has the least effect from the waves. This is going to let you do that whether you're in a buddy's boat, whether you're in a lodge boat or heck you just throw one in your boat and you have it to move it around in case the rod holders that you have on the boat already aren't in the right spot due to the wind in the conditions that you're fishing. All right, that's everything I've got for you. I hope everybody gets out and enjoys the early season of lake fishing. I'm going to be getting out, not this weekend, got family stuff, but next weekend I'm going to try to make a run at it. And as always, you want to see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next one.